Julie Davison from juliedavison.com. Welcome to Thursday Night Stamp Therapy. I'm so happy that you are joining me for this very special episode. We are using the Lighter Than Air Suites tonight to make three projects, which are going to be the projects in my March kit. I'm so excited about this. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. I've been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for almost 22 years. and the last few years, I've been doing um, project kits for free to my customers who order $40 or more. My team members also have an option to subscribe to get those kits for just $5 a month. I love being able to do that for my team members. And new this year in 2024, I am making those kits available for sale the month after. So, oh, I should have grabbed my samples. The kit, the project kit from last month featuring the Nature Sweetness is now available um, in in my in my little shop, my kit shop. You can go to juliedavison.com slash kits and you can get this kit from last month. And um, everyone who ordered $40 or more should have received their free kit already. Um, and right now, if you order in my online store, then you're going to get this kit for free, the one that I'm going to show you tonight, which is for March. And this one, we are featuring the Lighter Than Air Suite. This is from the January through April 2024 mini catalog. I feel like it just started and it's already on its way out. In fact, the Lighter Than Air designer paper is on the last chance list. And so that means you, you're almost out of time. <laughs> um, I'm looking to see what else. It looks like the other items in the um, lighter than air suite, I think we're all gonna carry over. So the hot air balloon stamp set and dies. Now, just a little note, cause I know the last chance list can be confusing. Um, I think on mine, I tried to, t you know, I didn't take all the bundles off. Okay, so um, all of the bundle discounting will end April 30th. If there's a bundle from the mini catalog or a bundle from the annual catalog that you're looking at, of course you save 10% when you get the bundle and get the stamps and the dies together. Well, after April 30th, those items may or may not still be available, but the bundle pricing will not be. So if there's something you're thinking about getting like the hot air balloon, now's the time to get it when you get that extra bundle discount. Now the stamp set and the dies will still be available in the new catalog. That's super exciting. Um, but of course you want to save 10%. So you should just go ahead and get it now. Um, the other items in this suite are the designer paper, which I'm going to show you in just a moment. We've got the rainbow adhesive back dots, which are just so much fun. And then also some twine. And this Baker's Twine three color combo pack includes flirty flamingo, lemon lolly, and balmy blue. Now in my monthly kits, I send out materials to make three different projects. And I also include a free gift and a back pocket card layout. I'm super excited um, about that. Now, if you're new to the channel, you may not know the back pocket card layout is something that I include in those monthly kits. And so you can collect them and create a ring or actually I would love to hear how do you store your back pocket card layouts? Do you put them on a ring like I do or do you do something different? Leave a comment and let me know. Um, these are all the back pocket card layouts from last year, and I had a few other special um, special edition cards in there as well. And so every month in the kit, there is a new back pocket card layout, and these include a layout with measurements, and then on the back side, two different samples. Obviously, this is an, a sample one. <laughs> I, st I still haven't gotten the, the cards printed. Um, I'm waiting for them to come for this kit, so um, they will be in your kit when they arrive, but this is just a sample. So two full color samples on the back side of the back pocket card layout. You also get materials to make three different projects. This month is three cards and then a sample usually of designer paper and some embellishments. And so in this month's kit, I'm including a five by six piece of designer paper. I would include a six by six piece, but it, it won't fit in my cello bag. So I did five by six. Um, and I'm also including a half package of these sparkle gems. Now this paper is a six by six paper pack. Um, and it includes, the paper pack includes eight 
um, sets of six different patterns. So let me show you those patterns. And um, even though these sparkle gems aren't necessarily meant to go with the lighter than air suite, I thought that the colors would pretty perfectly with this designer paper. So I included a package of those. Now those are a retired embellishment, but we have some similar ones actually coming out that are in the new in colors. And gosh, some of them are pretty darn close to these colors. Um, all right, so here are the lighter than air patterns. These are so pastel and pretty and just perfect for spring. Actually, this makes me think of Easter. Like I think you could make Easter eggs out of these cards. I think it'd be so much fun, but we have our, um, um, our signature hot air balloons here. And so in two of our cards, we're going to, we're going to um, fussy cut right from the designer paper. Although this pattern um, does have some dies that coordinate. So if you have the dies at home, you could die cut your balloons separately. There's also a heart balloon um, that would die cut as well. Um, and then there's a die for the little basket. Um, so you could die cut if you want. I'm just going to fussy cut tonight to keep them all, um, all in one piece. Okay. Um, oh, I'm just making all kinds of a mess. I'm running late tonight too, and I'm so sorry for those of you watching live. It's just been one of those days. You just feel like nothing is going as planned and, um, I just couldn't couldn't get my act together, so I do apologize. Um, okay, I'm just gonna put them over there for now. Here's the designer paper. <laughs> The colors in this paper are um, Balmy Blue, Fresh Freesia, Lemon Lolly, Calypso Coral, Petal Pink, Azure Afternoon. I love that. Fresh Freesia, did I say that already? Lost Lagoon. Um, just really fun paper, paper, bubble bath in there as well. Um, all right, so we've got some cards to make, so we're gonna jump right in. Now, if you order $40 or more, you'll get this automatically from me in the mail, and it usually goes out the first week of the month after, so uh, the first week of April or so, but I'm waiting on that card layout card, so it might be um, it, it might be a little longer than the first week of April with Easter and everything in there. Um, I'll get it out as soon as I can. <laughs> Worth the wait, always, for sure. Um, and then I also send thank you cards out to everyone who orders from me every month. So thank you so much for supporting my small business. Let's jump in. The card layout card this month is going to be this first card with the... Um, with the Fresh Freesia card base. I love these colors together. Fresh Freesia and Balmy Blue and the Lemon Lolly. We're gonna be using a lot of that um, combination. I need to measure my designer paper really quick and see. Um, so we're cutting from this designer paper and the first card we're going to cut designer paper that is two and a half inches by four and a half. So I'm going to get out my paper trimmer for this one and we are going to use this fun diamond paper. So two and a half by four and a half. This is five inches across. So I'm going to do two and a half this way and then four and a half off the edge. So now we still have a pretty significant piece. I'm really excited about the designer paper this week because um, these are the biggest pieces of designer paper that I've been able to include in a kit. And I think that's just so much fun. You're going to have lots of extra to use for other projects. Looking at some of your comments, it looks like a lot of you guys keep yours, um, your back pocket card layouts on a ring. Um, and Sherry says she has hers in the pouch that I made up. I did that at the end of the year. I, get, I did all the 2023 back pocket card layouts and put them in a fun little pouch. Um, that's such a great pouch too for storing like um, other miscellaneous supplies like adhesive and scissors and bone folders. Um, and Janice is asking if I'm going to offer the same set of back pocket card layouts again at the end of the year. I think so. Um, Currently, I'm offering them in the kits every month, and if you don't get it, the kit for free for placing an order, you can buy the kit the next month, so um, we'll see how the year goes. At this point, you can get them throughout the year is what I'm saying. You have the opportunity to buy the kit, which has the, um, which has the 
the layouts in them, but probably at the end of the year, I'll have some kind of offering again. Um, but that's a long time to wait. I'm just, I'm trying to say you don't have to wait that long. <laughs> I'm going to fuzzy cut um, some hot air balloons. I'm going to do both of them. So on this first card, we're going to do this combo here with the um, fresh freesia and the lemon lolly. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to do this one. I'm just going to do it now. And we're going to save that for our second card. Um, I love Stampin' Up's designer paper. They've been doing this more and more where there are focal images in the designer paper that you can get in either die cut or fussy cut. And so even if you don't really want to get the hot air balloon um, stamp set, maybe that's just not, you know, a set of images that you're interested in, um, you still can create some hot air balloon cards just using the designer paper without having to buy the stamps and the dies. And so whenever I'm designing these project kits every month, I do try to keep that in mind, knowing that maybe not everyone is going to have exactly the same um, materials at home that I do. So if you don't have the hot air balloon bundle, um, I hope that you will just get creative with a stamp collection that you do have at home and either substitute something else or make some uh, changes to the card to kind of make it your own and fit the supplies that you do have. Of course, if you want to buy something new, I'm always happy for you to do that in my online store at juliedavison.com slash shop where you can find Stampin' Up's full selection of, um, of products. And we've got the last chance list that was just posted about a week or so ago. Stampin' Up um, is letting us know all the things that are going to be discontinued. And I was surprised to see a few things have already sold out. So I'm making some updates to my list, which I think is linked up in the video description. And if it's not, I'll make sure to add it after today's video. Um, but the last chance list that I put together, kind of an easy to read format, also shows a bunch of yellow highlighting. And that is highlighting all of the um, items that are going to be on sale. And the sale prices are going to start April 9th. Um, but if there's something you really like, don't wait until April 9th to get it because a couple of the items that have sold out were items that were slotted to be discounted. And they still sold out before they were even um, discounted and marked down. So if there's something you really got your eye on, don't wait. <laughs> I know I keep saying that, but it's true. I don't want you to be disappointed um, that something sold out before you were able to get it. I put in my order. I got a bunch of the cello bags, which I use for my kits when I package up the designer paper. And so I ordered a bunch of those. Um, and I know some of the things that have sold out already, like the very vanilla thick card stock that has sold out already, which I'm not surprised about. I just, I'm, I'm surprised they discontinued it. I'm not surprised that it sold out quickly. Um, anyway, so make sure that you're checking out that list, getting all your favorites. And of course, we got a new catalog that's coming out. Yay! On Tuesday, demonstrators are going to be able to pre-order from that new catalog. And so you'll see lots of new catalog sneak peeks. I know over the course of the next few weeks, I've already shared, um, I've already shared some too. Um, that catalog will start for everybody on May 1st. Um, and I'm actually going to be in the middle of the Mexico incentive trip when the catalog catalog launches. So that's going to be a little bit interesting. <laughs> You'll definitely want to make sure you reach out ahead of time and let me know if you have orders, last minute orders before um, April 30th, because I'll be gone April 29th through May 4th. Um, it's so exciting that it's coming up quickly. I can't wait. Um, so the vanilla thick cardstock has sold out, but the regular vanilla cardstock is still available. So Nan, no worries um, that you can still get very vanilla, very vanilla in general is not um not going away um oh a little small world i always love the connections we make sometimes in the chat all right let's do some uh let's do some layering and get this card put together um i'm using my little um my little cheater and actually i am missing a piece it's still in the envelope i have used the cloud punch that sounded like clown, but I meant cloud. I'm still getting over my cold. The cloud punch. And um, this is actually going to retire as well. So if you're interested in the cloud punch, make sure that you um, grab that. Let me just see if that one's on the discount list. Do you see all this yellow? Oh my 
crazy. Yeah, the Cloud Punch is going to be 50% off starting April 9th, so make sure to get that one on your list. Generally, the bigger discounts mean that they have more in stock, so 50% off to me tells me that they've got a lot of punches that they're wanting to get rid of, so you're probably good to wait until April 9th um, to get the discount on that Cloud Punch. Penny, I see your question about the product share for the new catalog. Absolutely, I will be doing a product share for the new catalog, so be watching for details about that. I'm not allowed to accept money um, for the product shares until a week before I can order. Um, so I will not be posting my product share information until later in April, um, probably after I get my tax return done. <laughs> and then um, I'll be sending out invoices right before I head out on that incentive trip. All right, so we're, we got a um, fresh freezer card base here and our designer paper. We said that was two and a half by four and a half. And so we are going to layer this onto a white white cardstock layer that's two and three quarters by four and three quarters. And um, I'm really excited about this card layout because I think a lot of the card layouts that I do tend to be like vertical. And so I'm excited that this one is going to be um, horizontal. So we're going to add this to our card and this is going to go kind of toward the top. And then we're going to add a layer of balmy blue. I love this color. And we're gonna do, actually, I think I meant to cut this down. Let me, let me double check my measurement off camera here. Yeah, I wanna go with like three and a half, I think, on this. So let's, let me just cut this really quick. When you get your kit, it will be correct. <laughs> um, this is just my working prototype here. Okay, so three and a half inches by two inches is our balmy blue banner. And I'm gonna get just cut a banner tip with a scissor. So right at the center, about a half an inch or so. And then from each corner to the top of that center cut. And that usually gets me a pretty even banner tip. I'm going to add this to the card. Actually, I think I want to use some Stampin' Dimensionals. We're going to have our, um, we're going to have our hot air balloons. Oh, I love that. And we're going to add a cloud with the sentiment over on the um, on the other side. So now I just got to figure out which. I think I like it that way better. Also, I'm thinking I just want to go ahead and peel this up. <laughs> And just bring this down just a little smidgy. Um, okay. So I'm going to come down. I know it's like, Julie, you're not even moving it that much. But it is. It's sort of like a, um, a high center. Um, because I just want that banner to have some breathing room from the top, but hang over the edge of the designer paper. See, there is a method to my madness. I'm using the fresh, <laughs> the fresh Freesia, um, <laughs> uh, fresh Freesia ink to stamp. I was just seeing um, Sharon's comment, tear apart numero uno. And um, my first thought was, are you guys having a drinking game that I don't know about? <laughs> are you drinking every time take a drink every time julie tears something off that could be a very dangerous game to play while you're watching me <laughs> oh this is gonna go on with some stamp and dimensionals let's get those out i just love my stamp and dimensionals that is like the one thing um if you're new to card making the one thing i can say get some stamp and dimensionals and um really it makes a difference just to be able to pop up the layers on your card and kind of elevate things a little bit i think it just makes it look um a little polished a little just kind of stepped up a little bit so we're going to do stamp and dimensionals again when i do use a lot of stamp and dimensionals but i also try to limit my stamp and dimensionals to no more than three not three, I'm sorry. I was thinking three here and then I went for four anyway. Um, <laughs> no more than two um, layers of Stampin' Dimensionals just so my card is not too thick. I don't want it to have any trouble um, going through the postal machine. So two layers deep. I've got one under the blue banner and one under the balloons. And for my cloud, I need to, um, I need to use one under the big 
because that's going to be um, the same level as the balloons. But then this side of the cloud is um, on the same level as the blue. And so I'm going to have to do a layer of two Stampin' Dimensionals there to make it even with the cloud, which is on one on one. Does that make sense? I hope so. <laughs> All right, so this is going to go over here and just slightly overlap those balloons a little bit. Now the, the cloud, like I said, doesn't necessarily go with this um, bundle. And I think it is a little big as far as like proportions go, but um, I think it's perfect for um, stamping a greeting on there. So here's our card, clean and simple. That's my style, you know it. And uh, I have a little white piece for the center. And so we should do a little stamping on the inside and stamp one of our hot air balloons when of our smaller ones. So I'm going to get those stamps out and do that. But of course, before we finish up the front, we want to add some bling. So we're going to get out those sparkle gems. And for this one, I've got four different color options, the blue and sort of this, um, I think it's like a pool party and a, a balmy blue or coastal cabana almost looks like that new. We should compare them. Hold on. Let's see. <laughs> Okay, here is the In Color Shimmer Gems. Now these are the brand new ones that are coming in the mini catalog and I just wanted to compare the colors. They are essentially like the same gem, the same size, the same style. <laughs> these are the ones that go with the peach pie and golly molly, those are pretty darn close. These are a little bit lighter, um, but I think you could use the same ones there. Now this is the summer splash color and um, it doesn't quite match up. The, the pool party ones are a little bit lighter, but you could kind of use those together, I think. And then these brighter ones really are a better match for like the azure afternoon or even um, balmy blue. And then the pink color is definitely different from the pink and the in colors. I would say this is more like a calypso coral, maybe even like a flirty flamingo. Um, and, and we already looked at that one. Okay, very good. So that's how they compare, just in case you're curious. They are the same type of gem as those new in color ones. Um, but we are, are going to use the blue ones on the card. I'm gonna do three of them. I'm gonna mix the big and the small ones, and then um, I wanna sneak one never know where to put that third one. I always struggle. <laughs> um, I'm going to, I'm going to leave it there. I think on my original card, I had moved the balloons over just a little bit. Um, okay, let's do some stamping. Let's do a little balloon on the inside here. And um, this stamp set has um, a large balloon and a small balloon. And then there are some different stripes that you can mix and match. So if you wanted to do like two different colors you could do that or this goes in that center space and then for this one the stripes they just kind of overlap so yeah let's use the small one we're going to use the big one on a different card and um and for the colors um let's do some of the um well what colors do we have on our card of course fresh freesia and I'm kind of feeling some balmy blue tonight what do you guys think balmy blue and a fresh freesia um, I think that would be really pretty on the inside. So let's start with, um, let's start with Fresh Freesia, and I'm going to do the basket in Fresh Freesia as well. And then this is the Balmy Blue. Just going to kind of eyeball that and light it up. There we go. Oh, that is so pretty. Now the sentiment on the front says wish big. So on the inside, we could do up, up and away. Hooray, it's your birthday. I like that. Now, um, I don't have my, my chamois is dry. So I'm just gonna, I have to clean this stamp. I'm just gonna lick it and wipe it. <laughs> I know that's gross. Uh, I'm the only one using my own stamp, so it's all good. Um, okay, we're going to stamp this in blue. 
over there. Up, up and away. Hooray, it's your day. You know, the one thing that I would really love for this stamp set is if there was a cloud stamp. Now, there is a cloud die, but there's not a cloud stamp. And if you don't have the stamp set, there is paper that has um, the pink clouds here. Well, it's white clouds on pink paper, petal pink to be exact. Um, so you could, if you wanted to, you could fussy cut the white clouds and you could put them, you know, on your card, however, however you'd like. Um, all right, I think we're good though. I think our card turned out lovely. I am loving this layout. I am loving the colors and I am ready for our next card. Are you guys ready for our next card? I really am very excited about this card, but I'm kind of nervous because I feel like it's a little, I know you're, you're going to laugh at me. I'm worried that it's a little simple. And when you see it though, you're going to be like, this isn't simple, Julie, it's complicated. But then I worry it's too complicated. So how can a card be simple and complicated at the same time? I don't know but this one is. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do a fun fold card. I really wanted to have a hot air balloon go up and lift up. And so that's what we're doing with this card. This is called a hidden message slider card. Uh, but actually, we're not going to have a hidden message because the words are gonna be, well, I mean, I guess I take that back. Never mind. Rewind. Broop. There is a hidden message. It's going to pop up <laughs> out of the top. Oh, golly. Okay. Uh, for this one, we're going to need a couple pieces of designer paper. Okay. So I'm going to get my paper trimmer out. We are going to use those pink clouds, the pink with white clouds. We're also going to use this one that we cut out on our first card. And then the other piece I want is this one here. And I love this color. I feel like it's not quite mint, or I mean, not quite Lost Lagoon, um, but we don't have anything this color. It It's maybe pool party, maybe, I mean, maybe that is supposed to be pool party. I'm getting a pool party out. Oh my gosh, I think that's pool party. I don't know, that's not a good match for pool party either though. Do you think? Well, anyway, it's a very pretty color. I wish we had cardstock that was that color and not, I mean, it's kind of in between those. Anyway, okay, so these are the two that we need. And the first one, this one here, we're going to cut to um, cover the card front. And our card front is actually four inches wide. And so our designer paper is gonna be three and three quarters, okay? And then we're gonna turn it and we're going to cut at uh, five and one quarter. Okay, so this one is three and three quarters by five and a quarter. And then um, for our, um, our clouds, this piece is going to be two and a half inches by four. Did we already use that for something? Oh my gosh, no, this is not the clouds. We cut that one. <sighs> I'm telling you, it's been that kind of day. All right, our clouds are going to be two and a half by four. I have to double check and make sure I'm not going to screw this up. <laughs> I want to cut first at four. So let's bring it in this way. We need the four to be the tall. So the clouds are going to be vertical that way. Does that make sense? Two, what did I say? Two and a half. Yeah. Two and a half by four. Okay. So we're just going to use one of these and put these over here for another card. All right, now I um, I have done a little, oh, I've done the scoring for you. This is a five and a half by eight and a half piece of cardstock, regular half sheet of cardstock. I scored it at four inches and eight inches. So I have what is going to turn out to be a little pocket like this. So that's gonna fold over like that, okay? Now I could go either way. I don't know that it matters. I guess I, I want, yeah, I'm gonna have this be the front just because I like the folded edge instead of the, does that make sense? Like, I think that looks cleaner to be in the front than this. Ho hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so I want that to be the front, which is technically like my middle, middle panel here. I am going to um, adhere down this part. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do all the way around the edges. And center that in 
in the spot. Okay. Now we're going to do some fancy cutting. And this is where I mean, like, it's a little complicated. It's not that complicated. I have faith in you. You can handle this. Um, I'm talking to myself, but also to you <laughs> when you try this at home. We both have this. We both got this. Okay, so we are going to take our cardstock. And um, we have two folds right there. And so our measurements are going to line up that score line. Ow. Oh, I got a paper cut the other day and I just clipped it right there. Okay, we're going for the three quarter inch line, which is right here. This is one inch, that's half inch, three quarters is the big one in the middle. Okay, three quarters. And I'm lining the fold up with the three quarter line. It also comes down here, so I'm good. Okay, then we're going to take our cutting blade and I've highlighted my, um, my paper trimmer. I put a little piece of tear and tape back here so that you could see it and it would be white. Okay, so I'm gonna line up that, that line on my score, my cutting blade. I'm gonna line that up with three quarters of an inch here. We got one inch, we got half inch, three quarters is the big one in the middle. So three quarters there and I'm going to cut from three quarter three quarters of an inch down to, um, double checking, <laughs> four and three quarters. So we're finishing with that line right here at four and three quarters. Okay, then we're gonna do the same thing, but we're gonna put this score line at the three quarters of an inch right here. So first we did this score line at three quarters of an inch. Now we're doing this score line at three quarters of an inch on the other side of the cutting track. Are you following okay? <laughs> we're gonna do the same cut. So we're going right back up to three quarters of an inch and we're gonna cut down to four and three quarters of an inch. So the result is a card front that has Oh, it didn't go all the way through. I just need to give it some encouragement. Oh, it's messy though. That's all right. When you have the, the two layers, the designer paper on top of the cardstock, sometimes you just have to push a little harder and make sure you're cutting through both layers, which is what I should have done. Okay, so our card front has slits, right? Two parallel slits that do not go to the edges of the um, the card base. While we have our paper cutter out, we're going to get out our next piece. This is our slider piece. I'm using thick white cardstock, and this piece is three and three quarters by four and three quarters. Three and three quarters by four and three quarters. And I'm going to take it with the long edge at the top, and I'm going to take it to two inches, and I'm going to cut from the top not all the way down. Stop. Okay, so it doesn't have to be exact. You just don't want to go all the way to the edge. This is going to be our slider. And what's going to happen is we are going to weave it onto our card. I might need to, to cut these through a little more. Okay, we're gonna weave it onto our card. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to tape it back together over here. So that's why you don't want it to go all the way through because you still need that to be connected. If you do accidentally cut it all the way through, you can tape it back together um, with the tear and tape, which is what we're gonna do. But it's just easier if you don't cut all the way through. Okay, this is messy and I don't want that messy I'm just gonna use my scissors and clean that up a little bit. Oh, let's see. Okay, I think we're good. We're done with the paper cutter, gonna move that out of the way. Before I do my slider, I'm going to add this piece in the center and this should fit right up inside right in the center you might need to i feel like i might need to just trim that piece just a slight slight little bit i'm gonna do that i am going to give it just the tiniest tiniest 
little trim, okay? We're talking about like, I don't even know, a hundredth of an inch. No, I'm just kidding, it's more than that, but not much more than that. Um, this piece should fit right in between your cut lines, okay? So that it's just gonna go there. And then the top and the bottom, you want to line up with the top and the bottom of your cut. So that's gonna kind of be in the center. So let's go ahead and glue that piece on. And I do realize that we are <laughs> um, essentially covering up this fabulous piece of paper. And so I didn't put any glue in the middle. So if you want to, you could kind of pull that up and you could use this piece for something else because we're covering it anyway. So I am now going to apply this cloud paper in that space in between the two cut lines. You can tuck it if you need to. I don't really want it to go, no, I think we're good. That cut just didn't go all the way. I'm just gonna try to get that to lay flat. There. All right, before we put this card together, we're going to use our circle punch. I have a one and three quarter inch circle punch and I'm going to <clears throat> create at the top of the card just a little bit of a notch. This is totally optional, but I do think it's easier to grab a hold of the, um, of the slider piece, okay? So the slider piece, we're ready to put that on now. The slider piece is going to weave in and out just like we talked about earlier. And it should come all the way down here and cover up the bottom of that cloud paper. And then this is quite at the top. This is at the top and that covers the cloud paper. And if it doesn't cover the cloud paper, then you can rip your card, <laughs> rip your cloud paper up and adjust it or move it if you need to. Who's counting? <laughs> Number two. Um, I'm just gonna scooch it up just a little tiny bit. Okay. All right, now that two inch is at the bottom and the larger piece is at the top. We're going to weave the smaller end through the front of the card. And on the back side, we're going to bring it down. Doot, doot. We're gonna center it. We're gonna use our tear and tape or a piece of scotch tape, whatever you have at home. And we are going to just tape I didn't need one so long, that was overkill. We're just gonna tape that cut back together. We had to cut it so that we could weave it. Now we're just gonna tape it back together so that it moves as one piece. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, okay, so in the down position, and then when you pull it up, it slides up, and you want it to go all the way to the top <laughs> um, of that cloud paper. And while we have it out, before we put things together, I'm going to go ahead and stamp our hidden message. I'm actually gonna stamp the front message too. So on this card, the message for the inside says, I wanna make sure this is centered, hold on. I'm centering from side to side. Okay. Um, our message says, just a note to lift you up. And I'm coming down just a little bit. I don't wanna be right at the top because I don't want it to show through my notch. So just be careful about that. For the front, it's going to say, hang in there. And I have this little tiny strip <laughs> of um, petal pink cardstock. It is like um, 3 eighths of an inch by two inches. And it is a little long. Um, and so I'm just gonna trim so that it's right um, framing my words a little bit more. Okay. All right, let's move the words out of the way. We are going to use our tear and tape again. Oh my, I don't know how this is falling apart. 
Oh my goodness, okay. <laughs> um, here is the front. We're going to use a piece of this. I want to put it on the flap here. And put that down. Close the small flap and the large flap goes on top. That's the back side. Turn it over to the front. So the white square is at the bottom. It's a rectangle, right? White rectangle is at the bottom when the card is closed and when you open it, it comes to the top. And so on that white square, we're going to add our balloon. Guess what, we're gonna use dimensionals, of course, right? So let's go ahead, I have my baby dimensionals out. I don't use them very often, but this is so tiny that I definitely needed just a little baby right there. We'll use our big ones, and it looks like I'm using scraps right now to put our hot air balloon. Aren't these colors sharp together? I love that. Now, it's okay if it hangs over the top or the bottom because it's going to slide. Um, and we just want to make sure that from side to side that it's not going to get hung up on the sides here. So I'm going to overlap my hang in there. I'm going to overlap that quite a bit, but still keeping it inside of um, the bit here. All right, we're almost done. Of course, we're gonna add a little bit of bling. Hang in there, just a note to lift you up. Oh, I know, isn't that fun? I love this one so much. I think it's just such a fun card and I've been wanting to make it again, so I'm super excited that, um, that I had the opportunity with these hot air balloons. Now, I'm wondering if I should have uh, before I put this on, if I should have punched through the t both layers of this card, maybe that would have made it a little easier um, to, I wonder if I could do that while it's, <laughs> Julie, you are asking for it. Um, I don't think that's going to work, you guys. <laughs> okay. Um, well, in hindsight, it might be easier if you create your notch in the back side too, um, so then the only thing sticking up is the white. I think it would make it easier to grab. All right, let's add some bling to this card because we need to add some bling, right? Mom would be proud. Um, we are going to do, she might be mad though because we're only going to do two. <laughs> uh, on this card, I, earlier when I was making it, I did like put one up here and I'll, I'll, be, I'll just show you. If you like it, you can add your bling on the balloon, but I just felt like it was too much. Um, like, I don't know, it just seemed on, on top of the balloon, it just seemed out of place. But if you like it, by all means, thank you, Sharon. The balloon counts as three. <laughs> um, when you're making your card at home, you can put as many gems as you want on it um, and you can have so much fun. All right, so do you see what I mean about being a simple card, but also a complicated card because it, we did have some extra cutting and scoring, uh, but the design element itself is pretty, um, pretty simple. But these colors are just so beautiful together. We got a little petal, um, petal pink in there, some Lost Lagoon with whatever this lighter, um, this lighter green color is, and then a little bit of Calypso Coral with the basket and the gems. Just trimming. I have just a little bit of cardstock hanging over there. There we go. Lovely. Oh, I'm so glad that you like it. Janice, you think you'd put a smaller gem on the balloon? Uh, I will let you do that on your, <laughs> on your project. Uh, I'm, I'm seeing some questions. Let me, let me um, pause for a moment. Um, I'll share our, our two cards that we made here. I kind of want to take the extra blue gem off of there too. I'm going to. Well, here, let me show you because I felt like it was really crowded there. And this one, I had the balloons over more and so it didn't feel as crowded. So I'll just do that. <laughs> okay, I saw some questions. Let me answer them really quickly. Um, would that work with Summer Splash, one of the new colors? Um, you mean the card base being Summer Splash? Absolutely. Summer Splash is such a beautiful color. Let me bring in a little Summer Splash and show you. Um, here is Summer Splash. It's, it's like, um, oh no, hold on. Yeah, 
yeah, yeah. I thought that was Emerald. <laughs> I thought that was the Shy Shamrock uh, because it is kind of close. But um, yeah, the Summer Splash, such a beautiful color. It is a lot brighter. Um, but yeah, you could totally make some hotter balloons with this color. We got the Shy Shamrock, Peach Pie, Petunia Pop, and Pretty in Pink. Such bright, happy colors. I just love them. They do very much remind me of some of the colors in this designer paper. The designer paper is just a little bit more um, subtle, I would say, than those in colors. I also saw um, a question about the, um, I saw a question about the blocks, and that is a good, that's a good question. Um, so Stampin' Up! is getting rid of a few of the, the clear blocks, and um, I have to say, I don't necessarily understand why. <laughs> I think, um, and let me double check this. I think these are the blocks that they're getting rid of. Definitely the A block, which is the smallest one. I honestly use this one a lot. I was thinking I need to maybe buy a couple more of those. <laughs> uh, hopefully they haven't sold out yet. Um, if you don't have an A block and you use a lot of smaller stamps, I do highly recommend the A block. Um, it's not the B, it is the G. What? What? Okay, so the blocks we're getting rid of are the A block and then the G block, which is the skinny, small, like greeting one, which oftentimes I just find honestly is too small. Um, so I, instead of using that one, I would just use a different one and be fine. And the other one they're getting rid of is the I block, which is a nice size block. But I do have stamps that I would say I use this for that are long and skinny like this. So um, this is a good block too. I don't know why they're getting rid of those blocks. Um, typically the answer has to do with sales. Like if the blocks just aren't selling. Um, I know that they recently did a survey regarding clear blocks. And so it's possible that they found that people were not using those sizes or maybe they're working on some new sizes. I really don't know. Um, but if you are interested in getting these particular size blocks. I would highly recommend adding them to your next order um, because they will not be available after April 30th. Um, and probably the one I use the most is the A. And then I use the G more than I, but I do find this is to be a good size block. I don't use it a lot, but for bigger stamps that are long, I do. Okay. Are you guys ready for the third card? Oh my gosh. I, um, <laughs> I will admit to you, I haven't finished designing this card. I was struggling before I came on, um, live and finally I was like, it's just time. We just got to figure it out together. So I'm going to tell you, we're, we're going to work on part of it and then you guys can help me decide on some of the colors and how to, to finish it off. So we've got our first two cards in our March um, project kits. We're using the lighter than air designer paper and for these cards we both did use um, hot air balloons that were part of the designer paper. We cut those out for our focal point. For our last card we're going to do some stamping and I will um, pre-die cut some pieces for you. Um, so if you don't have the coordinating hot air balloon stamp set, you could, if you wanted to, um, create another design, either stamp a background or um, if you wanted to, you could take this shape and you could put it on another piece of paper and cut around the paper and make a designer paper hot air balloon. It could be like a template for you. But we're gonna do some stamping. And the colors I chose are Balmy Blue and Lemon Lolly. And, um, and so we're going to stamp first. And what did I decide on the basket, though? I think the basket is going to be um, Fresh Freesia. I love these colors together. It's such a pretty combination. Okay, so for the main part of the balloon, we're going to do our, um, our balmy blue. This would be so pretty, too, in the Azure afternoon. And honestly, that might be something we decide to switch to the Azure afternoon instead of the balmy blue. Now, normally I would stamp first and then die cut, um, but since I've got the die cut ahead of time, hey, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, our next piece is going to be the yellow lemon lolly. This color is so light and I haven't used it a lot, so my ink pad is pretty juicy. Um, and sometimes a really juicy ink pad can give us some extra, um, 
bits that we don't like on there, but that actually turned out pretty good. And it looks really dark now, but it will dry a little bit lighter. In fact, let me pull out the piece I was doing earlier. So here is the um, the one I did right before we started the video. So you can see how it has, it has dried um, a bit lighter. So I'm just going to switch those out so it's not so, not so dark. Now for the basket, I'm going to use the Fresh Freesia. And I'm taking these colors from the designer paper. And, um, and so if you're wondering how I came up with a color combination, it's just straight from the paper. And you can use any colors, of course, that you want. Um, all right, so we've got our um, we've got our hot air balloon. Let's do our words for this one. I um, I wanted to use some fresh freesia cardstock, and so I really needed a darker color. So I'm using basic gray here. You could use black if you wanted to, but I just thought basic gray was a little bit um, a little bit lighter, not as dark and heavy as the black. So basic gray for me here. Um, you of course could use any color when you're, when you're stamping. Um, all right. So on this card, I wanted to do kind of a little something fun with the, um, with, with the card. And so I did like a little, I scored it at one and a quarter and then I did like a little fold back and we can either fold back or we can just cut that off completely if we want to. And maybe, maybe we will just cut it off completely. I got a square that's two and three quarters by two and three quarters to layer onto a, a three by three fresh freesia square. And so my thought was that we would do our balloon like this and get it all popped up and cute. Isn't that cute? I do love it. Um, and so I wanna add some designer paper. Now this is, I think, two and three quarters by five and a quarter. And this is going to be for the inside right here. And I've left room to have um, a, a one inch piece of designer paper for um, for the border. And so if this is folded back, then you can see it. Um, and if it's cut off, you can still see it. Um, but if we fold it back, we have an opportunity to have a, another pattern here, either the same one or a different one. And so some of the patterns that we have here, we've got this yellow, which I'm loving. And we also have some of the stripes, which I was really enjoying as well and bringing all those kind of colors together. Um, and so I was just trying to decide whether to have the stripes go um, both here and here or just here. Let's let's cut some paper. What do you guys think of these <laughs> patterns? Um, this one is really nice too with the polka dots, but I almost think I would do an Azure Afternoon card base with the polka dots. Um, and what well, I guess those are the patterns that we have left. This is Bubble Bath. On the other side of the stripes, we've got Balmy Blue. Tell me what you think. I'm gonna cut some pieces. Um, those skinny ones, but not the other ones. Okay, um, for the stripes, we're definitely gonna do an inch of that. So one inch by five and a quarter. And that is going to be for the inside. It'll be right here. So um, kind of a fun little peek. And maybe I should put this bit together. Let's let's cut some more designer paper first, though. Um, I think this needs to be, that's five inches. Is two and a half? That's not going to be big enough, is it? I think that's two and three quarters. Let's double check. Two and a half might work. I'm trying to think if I could get two pieces out of it. Five and a quarter. Let's do two and a half. One here. And then I was thinking the other one could go here. Maybe that should have just been. <laughs> I'm regretting it. Oh no. Oh, two and three quarters. Let's, let's glue some pieces down here. Um, 
You always love these type of cards. Do you mean the cards that move or the cards that we figure out together? <laughs> um, both are fun, I hope. <laughs> Let's layer these together. We're going to use some Stampin' Seal for the white on the Fresh Freesia and then some Stampin' Dimensionals on the um, balloon. And one for um, our little one. Let's get out a little baby dimensional for that. Do you guys use the mini dimensionals? Sometimes I forget about them. Oh, good. I'm <laughs> glad, Janice. Um, I always love to go a little bit off the edges here. And so I did purposely make um, the square be just a little bit um, a little bit smaller maybe than we needed so that it would have some movement um and come off the edges all right i am gonna overlap quite a bit here because um the, the alternative would be going off the edge but i don't think that's going to work We could, <laughs> Trace, move our balloon over a little. <laughs> and you can see exactly how much was a little because my basket is still in place. <laughs> and so I'm just gonna move that over. That counts as the same tear off, right? Four. That's a different tear off. Maybe I moved it over too much. Okay, let's see what we got. The thing I'm not sure about is this flap. I'm just trying to decide if I want to keep the flap or if I want to cut it off. I kind of like it cut off. What do you guys think? Before we cut it off, I'm going to try something. Jana says, instead of cutting it off, you can tack it down. So if we leave it on, and tack it down, then we're leaving kind of that blue in there. Do you like having the blue in there? And what do you think about the tear? Was that too much? Maybe not, not good. The alternative, and I didn't show this, was we could have added two strips, two strips of the stripes, <laughs> two stripey strips. Um, but I felt like that was too much stripe. Janice says tack it down. Kathy says cut it. Um, Catherine says cut. Nan says cut. Sharon says tack it down. Penny says cut it off. Lisa, nice. <laughs> Kathy says tack it down. Um, if we tack it down, should I have kept the... Should I have kept the, um, not done the tear? Cut it off, cut it off. Let's cut it off since we have the tour. If we don't like it, we can always tuck that. And maybe when I do the card kit, I'm just gonna let you guys decide. I will leave it on there and you guys can decide to cut it off. Um, and, and decide from there. Okay, so if we, just to show you what it would be like with it, not, like pretend it's not torn. I don't know if I like the blue in the middle of that. Okay, also I wanna change my mind on the cutting measurement for our, um, hold on. 
Maybe I don't. I don't know. I was deciding if I wanted to have the designer paper be a little bit longer. But I think it's okay. If we do two and a half, then we have one to put here, which I do kind of like. So we're going to go with that. Yeah. All right. Yay! When you make your card at home, you can customize it however you would like. And you can tell me what you decided on. Did you tear it? Did you cut it? Did you tack it down? It will be totally up to you. Oh, I love these bright colors. What do you think? Should we have done yellow over there and stripies over there? Tack down on the inside and make a spot for a gift card. Nan, I love that. I love that so much. Let's Let's see what that would look like. <laughs> Oops. Okay. So we are going to take our balmy blue cardstock and we are going to score at one and a quarter. Turn it around and score at four and a quarter. I could have done it the other way. I overcomplicate things sometimes. Square at one and a quarter here and four and a quarter there and you get this. <laughs> oh, Julie. <laughs> okay. So, um, I love this idea that, um, I think Nan said it, right? Yes. Okay. So we're going to take that and fold it inside. Okay, so we still end up with the same look, having a strip here, but if you tack that down with tear and tape, then you create a little pocket which you can use to hold a gift card or money or some other flat little um, note or something like that. So I'm just gonna use a little bit of tear and tape, fold that back like this, fold this, like that. Do I have a little gift card? <laughs> it's not a gift card, but you understand, right? You have a little um, pocket that you can include um, your gift in. Okay, so let's move some of these things over here. So we've got our white piece here. And here's what I'm thinking. Instead of stripes here and yellow here, because the yellow with the yellow background, I thought maybe it was a little too much yellow, yellow, yellow. Well, what if we put the yellow over here and we do the stripes over here? I think I like that, you guys. Let's do that. Okay. Ba -ba 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 -da. We're saving the card, you guys. Thank you so much for all of your input. So for our yellow piece, it is going to be one inch by five and a quarter. I'm cutting it upside down because it already has adhesive on it. And I don't want to get my cutter all sticky. So that piece is going to go here. And then our stripes. For this one, I think we want to go doo -doo -doo -doo, two and three quarters, two and three quarters by five and a quarter. Two and three quarters 
by five and three quarters, and that's gonna fit there. And then we can have our, oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. That's so much better. Let's glue this down. We're going to have Um, we're going to have some, we could use Stampin' Dimensionals. I think I will. Stampin' Dimensionals. You've got to be careful because if you are going over the edge, you don't want to have adhesive where you're going over the edge. Okay, now we have the white to go here and we do have, oh, this is gonna be cute because the inside sentiment that we can use says, da, 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 wish big. And so if you have a gift card in there, right? You could be saying, hey, wish big for whatever you would like big and then over here we could put if we want to <laughs> tear that off of there you still have if you want to cut a new piece you've got you've got one there but if you want to decorate your gift card pocket strip you can add your strip over there and so colorful we need some gems on this one um i kind of wish we had some yellow gems i think the best match here is definitely going to be that um balmy blue again and i think what would be really cute i should include some of this in the kit i'm going to we're going to do a little bit of um Sorry, a little bit of white twine. I'll have a piece in your kit for you. Um, and we'll just tie a little, oh. <laughs> tie a little bow. Now I, um, I would normally, if I was just making this on my own, I would normally say, let's use some of this twine and do like a yellow bow or something there. That would be really pretty, but I will not have enough yellow twine to send everybody a yellow bow. So I'm going to do a white bow, which I think is really nice on there. And if you have the yellow twine, the lemon lolly, that would be a lovely, a lovely addition to your card. We'll stick this on with a glue dot. Yay! <laughs> Jennifer says she looks forward to making this card when she gets her kit. I love it. It is not too late. If you haven't already, you can place an order with me um, in March. You wanna order $40 or more to get this card kit for free. It will include um, sample pieces, five inch by six inch pieces of the lighter than air designer paper. And you'll have some leftover pieces to make some more fun cards with. You'll get to make our fun little fold over gift card pocket card. You'll get to make our fun little um, hidden message slider card. Isn't that one fun? Uh, you'll also get to use our back pocket card layout to make the wished big card as well. Aren't these colors just the best? Leave a comment and let me know what you think. Which one is your favorite? Which card are you excited to make at home? Whether you're getting the kit or you're just inspired to stamp something like this at home, leave a comment and let me know. In the meantime, how about some more inspiration with this stamp set bundle? The hot air balloon bundle from the mini catalog is so fun. And I've made some other cards that I have shared with you. So I'm gonna share them again. Um, to inspire. Here's one that I cased from the mini catalog. I used again the balmy blue and the, <laughs> the lemon lolly stripes. I just stamped the hotter balloon in the background and I just love how subtle it is and it makes that smaller hotter balloon just pop. So fun. Here's another one. Simple design. I love this. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> I did it over there too. A little bit different. I really like the cloud though for the sentiment. I think that's awesome. Uh, this is one I shared a few weeks ago, the envelope flap card, a little gatefold. Do you guys remember this one? I'll add the link in the video description if you haven't seen it already. It is such a fun card to make um, using the stripes Azure Afternoon here with the balmy blue. And I use some of the detailed die cuts as well as the die cut clouds. Here's one. This was inspired by last month's back pocket card layout. Um, I love this layout with the striped designer paper and using the hotter balloon paper just as is, adding the sentiment hang in there. And lastly, oh, no, there's two more. Uh, this one I did for our Sunday stamping video. This is a surprise pop-up card. When you pull it out, it's attached with a little piece of cello bag and it flips up like that. How fun is this? I had so much fun with these colors. Fresh Freesia, uh, Lemon Lolly, Balmy Blue, and some Calypso Coral. I'll link this up in the video description as well. If you haven't seen it yet, it is so much fun to make. Another fun fold card. This one is one I shared back in December. It's an easy center step card. Um, and so there's a piece of cardstock that goes on the front and a little double mounting card. Hooray, it's your birthday. Wish big. There are so many ways to use the Lighter Than Air Suite and the uh, Hot Air Balloon Bundle. And I hope that you were inspired by the cards that I shared today. Make sure that you order in my online store to get the March kit for free, um, $40 or more before tax and shipping. You can shop online at juliedavison.com slash shop. My host code is in the video description. You can check it out there. There's a brand new kit every month. So if you don't get a chance to order in March or you're watching this, after the fact, you can order in April. There's going to be a brand new card kit featuring the flowering zinnias. Oh, I'm so excited about that kit for April. And there's lots of reasons to order in April with the last chance discounts starting on April 9th and the end of the catalog. You want to get all your favorites. If you enjoyed tonight's video, please give it a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching and being here. I really appreciate um, all your help in the chat with this last card, especially. You guys are awesome. I really enjoyed stamping with you. And uh, if you enjoyed stamping with me tonight, please make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on future card making videos. This Sunday, mom and I are featuring the cutest cows bundle. I haven't designed my card yet, but oh my gosh, that bundle is just the cutest. Tune in to see what we create. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. I will see you again very soon. Bye.